Hello, this is Andrew Ford for PhotoFocus, and today we're going to talk about the fractal noise effect. This is one of the most useful effects in After Effects. It creates grayscale noise that you can use to make all types of organic looking backgrounds. You can do textures, you can do displacement maps, you can make light wipes or energy waves, and you can simulate many atmospheric elements. So here's a video of a castle in Scotland. It's a dreary day, which is typical up in this part. And the client says, you know, when I took this video, there was actually mist from the ground. I made it look really cool. I want to use this shot in the travel video. Can we add that back? So I'll say no problem. We'll add a solid into our composition. And then we'll go to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise, or just search for it in the effect and preset panel. Here's how the effect looks when it's applied. The first option under fractal type, you can just scroll through and see what the different options do. Some of the best things to do in fractal noise is just play around. Under noise type, you'll see a few options that have to do with how After Effects interpolates the values of the noise grid. For the purposes of FOD, we can leave both settings on a default. Here's the contrast and brightness settings. You can see what they do. We can also leave this on default. The transform property allows for scaling. You can play around with it and see the different options. We will leave it on uniform scaling for this. Complexity is the number of noise layers that are combined. This has a relation to the subsettings that are below. You can see here, as we move the complexity from one to 20, the differences that you'll see. Subsettings has an influence percentage, scaling and rotation and offset property. Let's change the noise type to block here. It's probably the best way to see how this effect works. Notice now with the rotation and when I change scale, when I change influence, the vast difference in this block pattern. And that's why I say one of the best things to do with fractal noise is to play around with it because you really get a sense for how it works and you may create some cool stuff by accident. But anyway, we can leave that pretty much in the default settings for what we're trying to do with fog. We will set our layer to screen mode. You can see how it looks by default. Obviously it's way too foggy there. So we're gonna turn down the opacity. And now we're going to make our solid into a 3D layer. Then we're going to rotate it and bring it down in the composition. And why we're doing this is because by making a 3D layer and rotating it, we're actually adding depth to our fog. And by lowering it to the bottom, that's the area that we're trying to have this atmospheric element be apparent. And now we will add a mask and we will feather the mask, but then bring in the mask expansion and that will not give us the hard edge. And as we toggle the layer on and off, you can definitely see the difference when it's off. And that's the point. It's supposed to look like it blends in the original picture. Now, as we play the clip, we see that it looks weird because the fog is not moving with the clip. So evolution is usually something you use in almost all instances of fractal noise. But as you can see here, that's just changing the image with each revolution. And that's not what we want to do. We need to physically move the fog. So what we really want to do is go to our offset turbulence property. We can set a keyframe for offset turbulence to go to the end and set a keyframe again. Let's just change the value by 100 and see how that looks. We play the clip and much better now. That fog is starting to look pretty realistic with the clip. Again, we toggle off and we toggle on and we see the difference. And now we have a clip the client feels is more representative to what they saw and what they want to put in their video. All thanks to Fractal Noise. Thank you.